Okay, uh, welcome to the uh, today's webinar. My name is Boris Polyakov. I'm from Adenda Limited, and here we are representing Eric Systems for recording, streaming, and uh, auto tracking. And in this particular webinar, I would like to tell you uh, to tell you about um, one interesting product that we have called DS4CU Speaker Tracking Station. Now, DS4CU Speaker Tracking Station is a um, device that allows you to automatically change the way your video looks like, uh, the way your cameras are positioned according to the active speaker. And uh, you can have up to 99 speakers, so you can have up to 99 presets for them. And uh, you can use up to four video sources at the same time, which could be cameras, which could be computers, or any other combination of devices. Um, in uh, this particular case, for example, the way I'm using DS4CU, I'm using one camera, and you will see it shortly. And uh, DS4CU is already integrated with um, the most popular uh, and common brands when it comes to microphone systems, such as Shure, Bosch, Sennheiser, Televic, and uh, a number of others. So, and we also, by the way, keep integrating more and more um, every other uh, every, every uh, now and then. So, if there is a brand that is missing from our integration list and you would like to uh, us to integrate it, please let us know and uh, we will be able to uh, help you out with this. Now, uh, the particular um, DS4CU integration I have today uh, that I want to show you is uh, one with Televic, uh, Plexus AER. And uh, before I um, show you everything, I just want to briefly describe how in general DS4CU functions. Suppose you have a conference room, and then in this conference room you have a task you would like to automatically track the active participant. Maybe somebody pushes the button on their microphone to speak. And uh, what DS4CU allows you to do is the moment this happens, the camera moves in on the person, um, the view is adjusted to display the name and the title uh, and all the other graphical information about this participant and about the video as well as control what is your recording and streaming layout on the media station. Because if you use DS4CU together with other products by Eric, you're able to mm, customize everything with just one button, which is the microphone activation. So like this. The moment I press a button on uh, the um, microphone connected to the Plexus AER, um, the image is automatically adjusted 50-50 the way I set it up. And you can see my name and the title and the logo of my company, everything as I preset it to be. And the camera also automatically moved to this preset. Now, if I activate, let's say um, there are times when there will be multiple participants talking. In this case, you can adjust what happens. In my case, I made it so that the camera would zoom out. You would have only the camera, so slides are removed for the equation for the moment. And uh, you have the view of both microphones as well as, a uh, as, well as an overlay, so something that goes um, above the image. And the moments uh, people will stop uh, talking at the same time, the image will go back to what it was just the moment before. So in this case, back to this active speaker. And if I... Um, and if the last speaker also uh, stops talking then uh, and they deactivate the microphone, you can also set what will happen. In this case, I preset it to return back to my normal theme, which is mostly content and then camera in the corner. And with DS4CU, as I said, you can have very different types of uh, um, very different types of installations, very different types of combinations of devices. For example, this is um, pretty much what I'm using right now, except I only have one camera. So I have my media station, Kel3W Touch, there is a computer, there is a Televic system, and then there is the SVCU. The way I have connected everything is pretty much like this. So we have um, the SVCU and the computer both coming as HDMI sources. The camera is connected through the network by using ONVIF. And uh, which is, by the way, one important point that um, I want to mention is that you can use third-party cameras together with, uh, with our equipment, not just this for CU, but the media stations and other products. So it is totally fine if you already have some uh, cameras of your own, as long as they support the protocols that we support, this is, uh, this is okay, such as, for example, Onviv. Now, in this setup, the microphones are connected to Televic, and you can also uh, get uh, sound from Televic by connecting it to the media station. 
But uh, you don't always have to use a media station, actually, because what media station in that equation would allow me to do is record and stream. And uh, that's basically what I'm doing. But in many other scenarios, you would only need to participate in a conference. And maybe you would record this on software. That is also fine. So what you can do is you can have DS4CU, your microphone system, and connect them to a computer using converters or um, direct cable connections. In the case of DS4CU, because it outputs in HDMI or VGA, you would want to use a converter like this one on the image, which is our product, RAD HDMI to USB bridge. Or for that matter, if you have another HDMI to USB converter, you can also use that. So you would get DS4CU as your webcam, put it into, the, um, uh, into your video conference uh, app, make it a webcam. And uh, the audio would uh, also be transferred through your microphone system. And in this case, you can use, for example, two cameras or maybe one camera or as many cameras as you want, up to four. And uh, this would make it look very similar to uh, solutions, existing solutions from other brands like Cisco or from Televic, where you have two cameras and they would be tracking the active participants. Except here, everything would be bound on the microphones and presets, which makes it very easy to install because you do not need to customize um, any code. You do not need to write that. You do not need to register faces of people. You do not need to set up active areas. All you need to do is just set up the presets for every participant, write the, uh, like re upload and overlay the one that you want them to use or use the existing one. And that's it, you're ready to go. Just save that. Now, in terms of practical applications of the S4CU and uh, successful stories already, there is one I would like to show you right here, which is the National Formosa University in Taiwan. And in this university, if you, if you look at the images, every seat, every table, they have a button that you can activate in order to call the camera preset onto the person. So if you have a question, you press on the button, the camera will move towards you. And uh, they do this in order to track students and other participants when they hold um, conferences in this room. Now, I mentioned just a moment ago that uh, customizing the S4CU is really easy. So I'm going to back this up by showing you the web interface and you will see it yourself. So it's not just me talking. Now, for that, I'm going to switch to the web interface of the S4CU. There is only one web page, which is administrator. Once you log in, you are presented with this um, uh, with uh, several options. First of all, there is a tab called uh, uh, a group product called Media I/O, which stands for Media Inputs and Outputs. This is where you would customize what sources you are using on the S4CU, what are their presets, how they are controlled, and other information like that. So, in my case, as I mentioned before, I'm using one camera and I have set it up as my first video source. So here I just selected network camera and I used it. Notice that um, if you're using Onviv compatible cameras or you're using area cameras, you would find them using the network device managers. This is the second page right here. You would go to this menu, you would click refresh on network cameras and you would be able to find those Onviv cameras or our cameras. And uh, if your camera is neither one of those, you can still connect it by using other protocols. Uh, so if we go back, for example, I'm going to click on signal type. Um, you can either connect cameras by uh, HDMI's or VGA's uh, or other video sources. Then you could also be able to connect them via um, network by using um, a signal type encoder and then selecting the protocol. Here, for example, you can select uh, RTSP, RTAP, or RTMP then you can also customize how you control those um, how you control those uh, sources now the other pages here are uh, also for ptz control and display meaning the uh, on-screen language of your ds4cu there is also a graphical user interface uh, if i just um, go to that page you'll be able to see the on-screen um, GUI of DSVCU allows you to manually select the presets for all those speakers as well as do some other features if your microphone system supports it, such as voting. Now, you're also able to adjust the, um, the brightness, contrast, and other parameters of your image here. 
if we go to speaker tracking, which is the second um, second list of settings, the most important one is control setting. Here is the place where you define what is the microphone system that you are using with our uh, with DSVCU. In my case, as I've mentioned before, I'm using Televic, and uh, that is the one I have selected in the list. Uh, at this moment, we have integrated the following systems. Um, you can see them in the list. And all you need to do in order to connect such system uh, to the SRCU is just connect them to the same network and type in the IP address into the bar. Once you do this, uh, once you do this, you just press save and you are ready to go. Here is another bar that you can fill out though. This is recorder IP address. So as I mentioned, we have integrated DS4CU with other ARIC media stations of LS, KL, and other series. All you need to do is just um, input the IP address of the media station. And this will allow you to um, customize what theme the media station should be recording in. So this is available for media stations that so support the theme feature. Um, right now, I have typed in the IP address of my uh, media station, KL3WTouch, which is the one I'm using to do the stream. And uh, the, uh, the other settings that I want to show you are right below. There are three here. First one, general default. General default is responsible for what image DS4CU will produce when you are not actively using it, such as, for example, when there is no active speaker and uh, a scenario like that. You can customize that and preview it by using these buttons on the right side. Uh, I for the preview, pen uh, for the customization. And uh, this is the important part, so this is why I'm going to switch the layout to only content. Now in the top part, you have presets. Content preset, camera 1 preset, camera 2 preset, and camera 3 presets. Those define which preset the source will be using. So in my case, I mentioned I'm using only one video source, which is my camera, and it is the first source. So it is the content. Now, in this case, I have put number one here. That means the preset is number one. In uh, my camera, preset one is where I'm standing next to the screen. Now, if I wanted to use an additional video source here, and I wanted to display maybe two sources at the same time, or I would like just the other source to move, to specific position, I would write it here. So for example, if I had another video camera and I wanted this camera to move to preset three, I would just write preset three here. Then I would save, and that would mean that uh, both sources would be active. They would move to respective positions. And uh, if it's minus one, that means the camera will, and your video source will not move, it will not be active. So here you are in the first four parts. Uh, of this menu, you are just defining which sources to use and which place to move them to. Next, overlay, layout, and background are responsible for how you display the image on DS4CU. So with overlay, you are defining what is on top of the image. With uh, background, you are defining what is on the back. And then layout is responsible for the location of the video sources in your screen. To give you a better idea of uh, what these mean, I'm just going to straight up jump to theme and show you. When we click on theme, we open this uh, page where it says overlay, background, and layout. As you can see, everything is numbered. So if I wanted to have a general rule where uh, in terms of background, I would be using this one with the logo and the, uh, and the wave, uh, the blue wave, then I would, uh, I would need to use background number one. If I wanted to use, let's say, overlay number four, where it says, uh, uh, something on the golden background, uh, on the golden overlay rather, I would need to use overlay 4. And then layout, I have lots of selections here. I can select the one that I would like to use. I just need to know its number, and then I can uh, use it straight away. And as you can see, there are 34 layouts here. If there is still not a um, single layout that you want to use, and you, maybe you want to create your own, it's also easy to do. You can use uh, an application called Layout Editor for that. And uh, by the way, if you would like to um, get access to those applications or you would like to know more information, you can visit our website, www.a-dana.com. I will leave the link in the description and uh, you will be able to get this information from us directly. Now, uh, coming back to it. So if I wanted to set up these background, this overlay, and uh, let's say layout number 34, that's all I need to know. 
then we just go back to control settings and then here in the pencil we would write this overlay layout background and that would already change how the s4c will display the image when we're not using it now ex uh, external recorder theme here is responsible for which theme media station will use when um, we activate this mode let me demonstrate right now uh, you are still seeing the layout i'm going to activate one of the speakers as you can see the theme already switched to 5050 again and the moment i deactivate it we are going back to my external recorder theme number five which is exactly this content and camera in the corner now in the same way you are also able to set up what happens when there are multiple people speaking the exact same procedure you just configure the presets for the sources configure the overlay layer background and the external recorder theme then there is the last page here uh, the last menu called group multiple people speaking this is available only for those microphone systems that have the group functionality in terms of the ones that we have integrated for example that will be show there you will be able to define groups uh, users into their respective groups and then set up an additional rule now if we are talking about other participants or ra rather um, setting up presets for the speakers then this is the place where we'll, we where we would do this in camera control we can press the green add button in order to add a participant add a microphone we get the ID from the uh, from the microphone system or we sometimes can find it on the microphone itself and then we the same way we define what sort of information we want to see when um, this speaker is active again we can do this by pressing on the uh, pencil button then setting up the preset of your source and other graphical information overlay layout background as well as the theme for your media station if you're using it as you can see it's all fairly simple you just need to uh, keep the theme tab open look at the uh, look at the sources that uh, look at the graphical elements that you want to use put their numbers in and save and um, uploading those elements is also very easy so if we go to theme all you need to do in order to upload an overlay or a background is for it to be in PNG format so uh, 1920 by 1080 and uh, if they fulfill the requirements you just upload them and uh, then there are some other settings that you can do if you go to system for example you are able to change the name of the station you are able to change some other details about it including even the way it will turn on so for example if you want the media station the ds 4 uh, rather speaker tracking station if you want it to work whenever there is power there is an option for that in the bottom of the page there is also an option for you to change the boot image and some other things like time and date if we go to network we are able to change the uh, the mode of getting the IP address whether it's DHCP or static we're able to set this up firmware would allow us to upgrade the station and by the way firmware updates are all free so if we integrate a new system uh, together with GSVCU you can get this update for free then uh, configuration would allow you to also get the uh, settings of this media uh, of this DSVCU take them out and import them into another st uh, station or maybe uh, if you would like to create your own layout then you can import this layout into the DS4CU and lastly account would just allow you to change the username and password and that's it there are no other settings if you would like to manually control the cameras and you would like to do it um, pretty much the same way that you do it on the media stations you would need an application called online director you can install it for Windows or for Mac and this would uh, also give you access to all the settings like themes like backgrounds overlays layouts and you can do this manually so you do not even um, if you want to you um, you can go without a microphone system for that so um, that's all I wanted to show you today if you have any other questions if you'd like to know more about the SPCU please uh, uh, leave a message or visit us on www.a-dana.com and send us a message there and we'll be very happy to assist you and um, thank you very much for attending this webinar. Goodbye.